Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the Shepherd's Morning, the place where we rise with the Lord, where we rely upon His Holy Word each and every day of our lives. It's December 8th today, and we're going to be looking at Revelation 3, 4. It says in Scripture, Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. And they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. <clears throat> to help us get into today's scripture, we use Charles Spurgeon's Morning by Morning to help us start our day. Here's what Charles had to say about this scripture. We may understand this to refer to justification. They will walk in white. That is, they will enjoy a constant sense of their own justification by faith. They will understand that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to them. They have all been washed and made whiter than the newly fallen snow. Again, it refers to joy, gladness, for white robes were holiday dress among the Jews. They who have not soiled their garments will have their faces always bright. They will understand what Solomon meant when he said, Go, eat, eat your bread with, eat your bread in joy and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white. The one who is accepted by God will wear white garments of joy and gladness while they walk in sweet communion with the Lord Jesus. Why are there so many doubts, so much misery and mourning then? It's because so many believers spoil their garments with sin and error, and as a result they lose the joy of their salvation and the comfortable fellowship of the Lord Jesus. They don't walk here below in white. Now the promise also refers to walking in white before the throne of God. Those who haven't soiled their garments here will most certainly walk in white in heaven, where the white-robed crowd sings perpetual hallelujahs to the Most High. They will possess joys inconceivable, happiness beyond a dream, bliss that imagination knows not, blessedness that even the stretch of desire hasn't reached. Those whose way is blameless, <clears throat> those whose way is blameless shall have all this, not of merit, nor of works, but of grace. They shall walk with Christ in white, for he has made them worthy. In his sweet company they will drink from the fountains of living waters. Amen. I'd like to add just a little bit to that just a clarification if I will I know sometimes we have viewers who are new listeners or new to scripture and that's a beautiful thing so I take the responsibility to lead you in the way properly when I say this where, where Charles began and ended that those are the uh, book stands if you will the, the strength to hold it upright notice that it is God's action that makes you white. In the middle, he talked about how we'll stand before the throne in white, providing we kept our clothes white here. I want to offer you another possibility. No matter how deeply you stain yourself, no matter how covered in mud you are of this world, no matter how ugly your sins are, there is nothing that God can't wash white. You may come to faith in an old age. Somebody may be playing this video for you right now and you're thinking, I can't even get out of my house or out of my room or out of anywhere else where I'm at. How can I be justified? Well, it's not by your own works. It's not by whether you kept your robes white. It's by Jesus alone. Jesus, the ultimate ultimate washing machine if you will for he washes us all but he doesn't use soap and detergent he washes us by his blood by his sacrifice by his life lived for us paying the price for all the stains that we would heap upon ourselves 
and they're ultimately heaped upon him. He takes them. And he washes us clean. I would dare say he actually takes our old robes and gives us new ones. For we have a new creation to come, new bodies. And again, it's a gift given to us because he loved us, because he knew us in ways we couldn't even know ourselves. All those dirty little secrets, all those wrong things that we've done, the thoughts that we've had that we wouldn't even want our dearest spouse or our mother to know. Our brother Jesus, our Father in heaven knows. And because of Jesus' love for us and his sacrifice for us, we've been made clean. He says, let me take those two. Don't try and hide them from me. Don't hold on to them. Let them go. And wear these new white robes. Brothers and sisters, we are all believers or non-believers going to stand before the throne of grace one day. There every knee shall bow, some out of undying love and respect, some out of the crushing weight of realizing everything they've done was wrong when they rejected this king. There'll be a separating of the wheat and chaff, but those who believed will be able to stand, not by their own righteousness, not by their own merit, not by what they did, by the love of Jesus, who stands between them and God, who washes us clean, clothes us in white, marks us by his blood. And there we are worthy because of him. Brothers and sisters, go out into this day knowing that you have this glorious new opportunity to walk with robes of white today. Who are you going to show them off to? Who will you show Christ's love to? Go forth. And then when you come back tonight, tell us about the amazing opportunity that God gave you today to share his love, to share his son. I'll see you in the evening.